welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at we talk health podcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro, and today on the We Talk Health podcast, I have Megan Meyer Stovall and Kathy Sudbury. Megan works for Sports Plus Lexington, and today she's here talking about a holistic physical therapy approach to women and pelvic health. Kathy, can you give me a summary of what that means? Well, that summarizes what Megan does for her living. She is a physical therapist, and she's here today to talk about women's health, pelvic health, from having back pains to even specializing for pregnancy, postpartum, and even afterwards, the years that follow after giving birth. This will be a little bit different today for you. I know several times we've come in and we've talked about generalized pain, back, necks. Sure. Well, we're also incorporating this in women's health because a lot of times this can come from other issues. And Megan has taken that in a new direction for us. Perfect. And Megan, I'd like for you to start uh, telling us what made you think you wanted to get into this and why your clientele has grown so well. Sure. So I got into this because I'm a mom myself. I'm a mom of two. I've got a five-year-old and a three-year-old. And after giving birth to my five-year-old, I experienced what at the time I thought everybody told me was normal changes that occur after Mm -hmm. having kids. So I didn't really think much about it. I had, like most women do, some back pain, abdominal separation, which is diastasis recti, and some incontinence and prolapse. It got a little bit better in the months and and weeks postpartum, but again, I didn't do a whole lot of treatment for it. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 18 months later, because I had both kids pretty much back to back, so fast forward 18 months later, have my second child, and I stayed pretty active throughout my pregnancy. Um, But after the second child, things got worse as far as the back pain that was associated with it after labor and delivery, the abdominal separation. Um, Megan, I'm going to stop you right there. If you'll explain that, because I know Will is probably sitting here going, what's she talking about? And some general public (laughs) women, and you know, that was something I had to learn as well, because I had two C-sections, and and they were vertical, not Mm -hmm. horizontal. Mm -hmm. So knowing what it means, but the general public doesn't. So if you'll explain that as well. So after having both kids, I had some on and off issues with back pain Mm -hmm. and then abdominal separation, which is also called diastasis recti, which that occurs in every pregnant person, especially into the third trimester. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they spontaneously heal on their own. Other times they linger for months or years. But what that is, is as the baby grows in your belly, it literally pushes and spreads and separates your front abs, for Mm -hmm. lack of better words. And there's some fascia or tissue in the middle in between those abdominal muscles that hold it together. So you can think about as that baby grows, it pushes and spreads everything out. And again, a lot of times in in many moms that spontaneously heals, but for others it doesn't. It can lead to umbilical hernia where the belly button kind of pops out. A lot of times that's a a telltale sign that you can tell the baby's ready to pop, you Mm -hmm. know, (laughs) when you can see that belly button pop out. But a lot of times that's an indicator that there's something else going on that needs to be addressed from a musculoskeletal standpoint. So for me, I had issues with the diastasis recti or abdominal separation that did not spontaneously heal and only got worse after my second pregnancy and delivery. And then prolapse, Mm -hmm. prolapse uterus, and some bladder incontinence associated with that. So with all my issues that were going on, I started to think, okay, I'm a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. I should be able to fix myself. If I can't (laughs) fix myself... How do I trust other people to think I can fix them? Sure. Because just the traditional physical therapy exercises, stretches that I knew, while they helped, they didn't fix everything. So I started digging, looking into more research, 
reaching out to other friends I had in the PT world, whether they be coworkers or people that I had graduated with, and trying to find more information. And reading different research articles, I came across a course that really focused on and specialized in the pregnant and postpartum population. So spent several weeks and months doing that course and got my certification in that. Around the same time was when West Tennessee Healthcare and Sports Plus started really pushing the McKinsey method and bringing in our own MDT courses. Mm -hmm. And the nerd in me got real excited. The PT (laughs) nerd in me got excited because the more I learned about these things, two separate things, you know, the McKinsey and the spine, which what I thought were two separate things, McKinsey and the spine, and then women's health, core, pelvic floor type things really went together just perfectly hand in hand. And so, like I said, the nerd in me got excited that I was learning these two things separately, but was able to incorporate them together in my practice. And it just kind of snowballed and spiraled from there. What was kind of the key for me when I was trying to treat my own postpartum issues Mm -hmm. and what I thought was just normal after pregnancy and everybody told me well yeah you're just this is your normal postpartum body you'll never be you'll never be the same again your body is forever changed after you have kids while that's in some ways true i've learned through all this that common doesn't have to be normal just because it's common to have incontinence after you have kids or it's common to have back pain after you have kids that doesn't have to be your new normal Mm -hmm. you know you can jump on the trampoline again and not have to worry about having an accident right where i was used to i thought okay if this happens to everybody i just have to learn to deal with it you don't you can be normal again so that was really what got me excited about this yeah was seeing that there is hope you know you don't have to just settle for what everybody says is normal Mm -hmm. after having kids. That's awesome. So you said the McKinsey method. Can you kind of give me a summary of what that is? So MDT is mechanical diagnosis and therapy is what it stands for. Uh, It follows what we call the McKinsey method. It's very heavily spine focused. We look at the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine, which is your neck, your mid back, and your low back screen that for any issues and then take it out from there from a joint by joint approach oh wow okay so what were your your steps i guess for yourself to get back to the correct normal so when i incorporated both the mckinsey method what i learned from that and then the exercises and just overall holistic treatment approach to women's health i started with my spine and noticed that i had a lot of upper back issues Mm -hmm. that seem to refer pain towards my pelvic floor and led to a lot of the issues with prolapse and incontinence. When I'd been to doctors or asked other therapists previously, the answer was always do more Kegels. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, You know, if you've got prolapse or if you've got incontinence, we'll just do more Kegels. Doing more Kegels wasn't working for me and it was actually making things worse. So I took my own health, my own hands, and that's when I started learning more. Mm -hmm. The more Kegels I did, it did not get better. And I noticed that my back pain had a pretty significant correlation to my pelvic floor symptoms. So I kind of took a step back and tried to not just look at the pelvic floor and not just look at the back, but how can I mesh these together? So starting with more of a McKinsey method treatment approach, which is just a step-by-step, let's just take baby steps, just Mm -hmm. work through these baby steps. I started with my low back, went through different test motions and exercises with that, got a little bit better, worked my way up to my thoracic spine, and I noticed, which is your mid-back, I noticed I had a lot of stiffness, postural issues in my thoracic spine. The more I worked on that, the better my pelvic symptoms became. And then I also started working on Kegels, but in a little different way than Mm -hmm. I had previously taught patients or been taught um, personally before with incorporating or breathing, diaphragmatic breathing techniques. Your diaphragm plays a big role in how your pelvic floor works. So I started working more on diaphragm and diaphragmatic breathing exercises in conjunction with the thoracic exercises I was doing. And then also I worked my way down to the hip, which Mm -hmm. a lot of people, when they think 
McKenzie method, they just think spine, but McKenzie definitely looks at the extremities as well. So when I was comparing both right and left hip, noticed I had some discrepancies from one side to the other, so found a specific direction that I needed to work and stretch the hip. Lo and behold, the more mobile my hip got, my incontinence completely went away, pain went away, and my posture got better. My diastasis began to close the more I continued to progress with those breathing and diaphragm exercises. Mm -hmm. And then again, it just kind of snowballed from there. I continued to work down the kinetic chain to my feet because people a lot of times don't think that your feet can play a role on your pelvic floor or your back. But notice that I had arches that kind of collapse in. A lot of people have flat feet or arches that collapse in. I started working on exercises for especially my left foot. It was just for me, the left foot was worse. The more I started working on those, Weird thing is, is the more I worked on my feet, the more I noticed my diastasis began to close. But again, it's just that kinetic chain. How right. if you stand with more flat feet, it's going to change the angle of your hip, which is going to change how you stand and how your back muscles work, your core muscles work. So it's just where it ties into that holistic approach right. from the whole body. <laughs> well, Megan, as you're sitting here telling this, I hear you're saying uh, you were working on that. What you, I understand, but will and maybe people listening do not understand that that's exercises yes through physical therapy mm -hmm. that you had worked with and that's what someone would expect if they came to you mm -hmm. with just maybe even just having the pregnancy pain or post-pregnancy or like you said months after having all mm -hmm. of this yeah and i guess a lot of times when people i guess who've never had any experience with physical therapy before there's sort of an intimidation factor because you think of you know, somebody who just had this total knee replacement that we just got to push on it. We got to make that knee bend <laughs> exactly. no matter what, you know, no pain, no gain, which in some instances that is how physical therapy is. But, you know, it's definitely not a one size fits all treatment sure. approach. And that's why what I love about what I do, whether I'm working with a pregnant patient, a postpartum patient or that total knee patient, it allows me to bring out the creativity of this profession and you know when you walk into the clinic we're not just immediately going to throw you on a bicycle or say go run two miles on the treadmill we're going to start probably in a more private treatment room and just look at you look at how you move look at your posture listen to you see where you hurt what your complaints are how it's affecting your function what are your goals you know what do you want to see change in your body and your lifestyle to say hey physical therapy did help me so it's mm -hmm. all those things especially that first visit it's just a lot of talking and a lot of me listening listening to you and looking at your body and seeing what do we need to do where do we need to go from here to achieve your personal goals and that's what a lot of people don't realize is when a physical therapist meets you for the first time, not only are you listening, but you're watching, you're watching them walk, you're watching their posture, you're seeing how they're sitting, you're recognizing where that pain is, even though they're sitting and just talking to you, you can recognize, you're trained to recognize mm -hmm. this. So what I'd like for you to go into more details is if I was a patient and I was to come to you today with, say, postpartum pain, and, and it's more of the pelvic floor and what would I expect? Because that is a one of those that everybody's, oh, no, I need to go to gynecologist mm -hmm. for that. But I want the women to know out here in this world is that there is help through physical therapy. And that's where you play a huge role. So I've had s several patients come to me, and most of the time it starts out as something else, whether it be neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, hip pain, foot pain. And when we start talking in that initial evaluation and I ask questions and I look at them move, it starts to open up, well, yeah, I also have incontinence or I also have pain with sex, but I mean, I've had three kids, so that's just part of it. And I'm like, no, 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 let's talk about that a little bit more. That's not just part of it. So honestly, most of the women's health or pelvic floor, quote unquote, pelvic floor type patients I treat start out coming to me for other reasons. Mm -hmm. And then the more we talk, they open up about these symptoms that they're having. And what I like about what I do is I don't put blinders on to the pelvic floor, which unfortunately that's kind of what we're taught, you know, unless you have gone to specific courses or specialize in pelvic floor and, in, and you are an internal pelvic floor therapist, then you don't touch the pelvic floor. We don't even talk about it. Um, and in some ways, that's what we were taught in PT school. You mm -hmm. know, I remember when it came down to that women's health or pelvic floor section of anatomy, 
They basically left the pelvic model in the room, said, memorize all these muscles of the pelvic floor. We're not really going to talk about it, but you just need to know it for the test. And that was kind of it. So from an orthopedic PT standpoint, it's kind of always been under the assumption, like, you treat everything in the body except for the pelvic floor. Just leave that to those specialists who can go in and look at it from an internal perspective. And that's how I started my career was just, well, we're just not going to really talk about that. It's uncomfortable and it's awkward. Let's just, let's just leave that, leave that alone. But that would be the equivalent of saying, well, I'm going to treat your hip, your neck, but we're really not going to mess with that rotator cuff. That's just not really my specialty. So let's just leave the rotator cuff alone. Right. You're never going to get your patient fully better if you can't look at the whole body and not be afraid to talk about the pelvic floor. A lot of women, especially when they're referred by their doctor to therapy, whether it be for pelvic floor or other issues, they kind of have a lot of anxiety about the pelvic floor. It's just uncomfortable for a lot of women to talk about. So I just be, I try to be just open mm -hmm. about myself, my history, and just, I try to be easy to talk to. Let's make it as <laughs> less awkward as we can. Yeah, of course. But I've had a lot of women who have said that they thought they would be coming for more of an internal manual therapy, pelvic floor type exam and treatment, and they were so relieved to know we didn't do that the first mm -hmm. day. And if you think about it, a lot of pelvic floor problems are from tightness or being hypertonic. That's what we call a tight pelvic floor. A lot of the pain's caused from that muscle tightness around the pelvic floor. So if you're already anxious about somebody checking that, I mean, just think if you're going, I guess me doing this podcast, a little anxious, a little nervous, I'm holding my shoulders up, my <laughs> upper traps are tense, you know, everything's just kind of tighter when you're anxious you're not going to really get the full picture. Right. You know, a patient's going to be coming into the room real tight, real anxious, and... Almost with their guard up. Yeah, with their guard up. So I've had a lot of patients who can just kind of have a sigh of relief and be like, okay, we can start to work on this in a way that I'm comfortable with. Right. So that's kind of the difference in what I do and more of your traditional pelvic floor therapist. I'm not specifically certified in just the pelvic floor. That's mm -hmm. why it's definitely a holistic approach. I'm looking at everything from your back to your hip to your feet to your neck, everything. Somebody who specializes or is certified in the pelvic floor is going to be doing more of an internal pelvic floor examination, which is very appropriate at times. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody. And I've talked to a lot of different doctors and nurse practitioners about it and patients as well who like the idea of starting with a more holistic physical therapy approach. Let's see if we can get them better with something that's a little bit less invasive and a little bit more comfortable to the patient. We'll try this for a few visits. If we're seeing progress, then great. Let's mm -hmm. keep going. Let's keep doing what's working. If I've seen you for a few weeks and we've addressed the back problems, we've addressed maybe the foot or the neck or the hip problems, and there's still something going on with the pelvic floor, whether it be pain with sex, tightness, prolapse, incontinence, whatever it may be. If we're still having issues that we haven't been able to fix with this holistic model, okay, then let's talk about sending you back to the doctor. You may need someone to look at you and, and start with their progress to a more internal approach. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I've had patients that we can get better with more of an external holistic approach. Megan, it's obvious you're very passionate about uh, what you do and how you're doing it. Is this just for ladies that ha are pregnant or just had had their children, their child or children? Is this limited since you know you are the age you just had your two children and this is your passion now? But I think I'm hearing you say, like myself, that if I'm experiencing when you said painful sex or the incontinence, is this also for women of all ages? Yes, so basically the postpartum period lasts for forever. So this may be appropriate for women who are six months postpartum, six years postpartum, or 20 years postpartum. I've had patients that I'm treating for pelvic floor symptoms that are expecting grandchildren. Um, so obviously, you know, my passion because of just the, sta the stage and season I am in life, you know, having two young kids, is typically with um, people who are newly postpartum or pregnant. But I've had several patients with excellent results that, like I said, are 20 plus years postpartum or even patients that have never had kids. You know, you don't have to be a mom 
to have these pelvic floor type symptoms. So really this um, treatment approach that I use is appropriate for all women. And you know, while we're on that, being honest, I've used a lot of these treatment approaches on men as well. Um, men can have incontinence. Men can also have diastasis recti, which is what I talked about, that abdominal separation. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're fat. <laughs> I've seen men who are very much in shape with six pack abs, but those abs don't close all the way. And there's that little bit of bulge in the middle, which leads to back pain. So I've had a lot of men that have come to me for either back or hip pain. And we start looking a little bit closer and asking more questions. Oh yeah, we'll also have a little bit of incontinence or I'll look at the abdominals and they've also got that abdominal separation. So, you know, what I do is primarily focused on women, mm -hmm. but I have been able to adapt and use these skills and it bleeds over into men's health as well. So Megan, it sounds like you can treat men and women no matter what kind of the issues they might be having when it comes to pelvic floor or the big word you just said a second ago. Diastasis recti. That one, diastasis <laughs> recti. If there is somebody out there who is interested in contacting you to try to either set up an appointment or just to learn more about it, who would they call? You can call at Sports Plus in Lexington. The number is 967-3224. You can email me, megan.stovall at wth.org. And, you know, we can just do a screening. A lot of times it's like, eh, would this be appropriate for me? Would it not? Just call. We'll set up an evaluation, set up a screening, and just see. Perfect. Uh, well, this has been a great conversation. Megan, thank you so much for coming in today, and this has been another episode of We Talk Health.